Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth. That push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in, in, in order to wake up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now the title of this lesson is gonna be Know uh Know Your Worth. Okay. Know your worth. And what I want to go into is the fact that, uh, just like the title says, we need to know uh, our worth, man. We need to know that, uh, you know, in the Heavenly Father's eyes, Lord willing, we're those men, okay, which uh, we expect to be, hence uh, the saying, hopefully elect, okay? We need to understand, you know, uh, we're not just, <laughs> you know, just some uh, flyby guys, man, just some regular average men, okay? Now, understanding that comes with a level of humility, OK, because the scriptures tell us what before honor becomes humility. And, you know, every day we uh, the Lord wakes us up, man, and we embark on our daily, daily path or what, you know, what in whatever uh, is put in front of us. OK, we're constantly being humiliated. OK, just being in Babylon, um, you know, it, it's humiliating. Just waking up every morning, you know. Knowing when you you got to go through the, the everyday rigors, you know, like I like to say, uh, same shit, same toilet, you know, going through that, that rigorous routine every day. OK, that's humbling. OK, and that's a part of the process, you know. So, of course, you know, us understanding our worth, but also walking in humility. OK, because there's a fine line and we don't want to cross that. OK, because then you're flirting with pride and the scriptures tell us about those who are prideful, okay? It doesn't end well, okay? One scripture pops in mind. It says, uh, I believe that's in the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, where it speaks about once pride has set in, there's pretty much no remedy, okay? So it's a, hey, that's a fine line that you, you don't want to cross, okay? But um, for the most part, we need to understand, you know, uh, if, uh, who we are, you know, and the Wadi Haobashim Shah, he's uh, awakened us to that, to that understanding that we are the children of Israel. Okay. And when you go into that word Israel or Yashar Allah, it means he is a prince of God or a son of God. And just our mere name alone, okay, should, you know, give us a, 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 a level of integrity that is, you know, unmatched. Okay. Especially when it comes to other people. Okay. But most importantly, as being heralds and the vanguards, okay, and the ambassadors and the spokesmen or the prophets of Yahweh Bashim Shai, okay, for that reason alone, there's a certain, uh, uh, you know, a level of integrity that we're supposed to exude all the time. Now, of course, we're in this wicked ass flesh. The scriptures tell you that the flesh presses down against the spirit, you know, so there, there is a battle within that, okay. But also always, always having a mental understanding of who we are and the way we're supposed to act and the, we're, the way we're supposed to carry ourselves. And more importantly, the things that we're supposed to do being called into this ministry. OK, so let's jump on into this, to this lesson. This is Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six. OK, and it reads. For thou art an holy people unto the most high thy power. OK. And that word holy means separate or set apart. Okay. It says, For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh Bashim Shai, thy power. Uh, Yahweh Bashim Shai, thy power, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay. And that's a, that's speaking as, uh, of Israel as a whole, as a, 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 you know, in a broad sense. OK, now, obviously, we know that, you know, there are degenerates of our nation. The majority of our people here in America are are wicked. OK, 
and they just will not hear the law of the Lord and the ways of the Lord. They just will not do them. Okay, we understand that, you know. But going back to the times that this was being said, okay, um, you know, that was the Lord letting us know, look, you we can't act like uh, uh, the heathens, man, okay? The, the, the Heavenly Father breathed breath into our lungs, man, okay? Uh, basically meaning give, giving us the understanding, you know, that other nations just don't have. And once you wake up to this, to this reality, you see it, man, okay? I was just watching a video. I don't know whether they were uh, Ishmaelite sand niggas or, or Elamite sand niggas. It, I couldn't tell, but they pretty much made a big ass, uh, uh, a huge plate of food. And uh, one guy was just, you know, putting his face in everything. He was just, you know, and then another guy would eat some. He'd pick up some and eat. But this guy basically had his face in there just, you know, over in, over indulging in it, you know. And I was like, how wicked is that, man? Like, that is fucking nasty, you know? Even Jake in his lowest state wouldn't go for that, man. No, 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 I'm not eating that, you know? But it shows in all all, all other uh, fashions. Uh, the, uh, the Most High shows us, you know, uh, in the ways that we act, okay, those of us who have come back into the understanding that we are that holy people in opposed to the other nations, man. Okay, there's a clear cut, difference man with all the nations okay showing you exactly what the scripture says for thou art a holy people unto the lord thy power the lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth okay so having that understanding there's a certain way you're supposed to act man and a certain way you're supposed to carry yourself and especially if you're a minister okay or a prophet of yahweh bashim yahweh there's certain things that you have to do OK, and that vibration has been going out uh, through the body a lot lately that uh, look, man. OK, we a hey, we, we're the action Jackson uh, camp, man. We, we do things, man. OK, we don't just wake up to the fact that we're Israelites and we're a holy people set apart. And then that's it. Kick your feet up. Nah. OK, there are prophecies that are going to be fulfilled that are coming down the pipe as we speak. OK. The, the Karagma is right around the corner. OK. World War III is right around the corner. The worst times of ever are right around the corner. And there are things that we need to do to be made exempt, like it says in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, and the fourth verse. Okay? But just as a whole, there's a certain mindset that we're supposed to walk with. Okay? Hey, like the title of the lesson, knowing your worth, man. Okay? Salakia. Let's get Where is it? I can't believe it's here. Okay, what do I want? Second address, chapter six. Okay, and this is, you know, these are milk scriptures. These are our foundation. The scriptures tell us what to uh, desire the sincere milk. Okay, because it basically uh, uh, constantly uh, uh, refines our foundation. Okay. And before you can, you know, eat meat. You have to uh, drink that milk, okay? And that the scriptures say, who shall he teach knowledge and, and, and uh, understanding, roughly paraphrasing them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, okay? This is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 6 and 50... Uh, 55... Uh, second Ezra chapter six and fifty five. It says, "All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, because thou madest the world for our sakes." Okay, so if the world, you understand that the world was made for your sake. Okay, there's a certain level of integrity that you have to walk with, a, a, a certain mannerism. Okay, you, we don't, we we're not to overindulge in things of the world, man. Okay. Why? Because the Lord has set us up to be the examples. Okay. And we read the examples in the scriptures. Uh, Rome, uh, what's that? Uh, Hebrews 11 chapter. Okay. And really all throughout, all throughout the scriptures, you know, and just as they were called to be examples, you know, unto the flock and unto the true believers, we're called to do that right now as well. Okay. Especially in the times of salvation. 
And it says, verse 56, it says, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle and has likened them, Salaki, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Okay? So, <laughs> the most high give a shit about the other nations, man. Okay, and, and, and one would say, well, why would he create all these people? And, well, this uh, verse 55 said the world was made for our sakes. Okay. And, and, and everything within it, the people, okay, they were made to be our servants and to be our tributaries. Okay, it's just that we went off and we didn't understand that level of integrity we were supposed to walk with and appreciate the fact that the Most High set us above all the nations and we went into uh, captivity and we were broken down and trodden down as a, as a people. Okay. But that does not negate the fact that the Lord created this world to be for us. Okay. And us to be the ruling class uh, uh, in the earth. Okay. And the process starts now. Okay. The first day you wake up to this faith, there's a constant uh, 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 traverse or uh, vibration of you wanting to be better. And to act like an Israelite, you know, the scriptures say uh, he is a Jew, which is one that is uh, inwardly and not outwardly. Meaning, what are you doing? What is your spirit? How, how are you moving as a man? OK, are you being an example or, or a representative, a proper representative of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai? OK, that's how we have to look at things now. Of course, a righteous man falls seven times. He get it back up, you know, and does it. But the wicked fall into uh, perdition, okay, or to wickedness, okay. So that that's gonna happen. But the my, the constant mindset is, you know what? I'm a son of the Most High. There's certain things I can't do, okay. Whether uh, uh, you know you're around brothers or it's seen outwardly, because guess what? The eyes of the, the heavenly Father are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Okay, they're always watching, you know, and you're always on trial. Hey, and, and, and Satan, like a roaring lion, okay, uh, 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 is, is, is going around seeing who he may devour. Okay, he's trying to sift us, you know, and it ain't nothing personal. It's just to make sure that we're the, 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 the representatives that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua wants, okay? Um, let's get another one. This is uh, Salaki. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 13, and we start at 11, I believe. Yeah, Isaiah 13 and 11, it says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Okay, and we're rapidly, rapidly approaching that time, man. Okay, because before we can have peace, we have, uh, the Lord has to send his son back and destroy this civilization, okay? This power structure, so to speak, okay? Take this beast that the scriptures speak about out of power, okay? Esau, Edom, okay? And the reality is a lot of our people are joined unto him. Why? Because they've drunken from that cup and they're drunken. And the philosophies of this world, okay? Uh, they're they're uh, trimming their ways. Um, they're, uh, what does the scripture say? Envy not thy oppressor. They're envying, they're envying their oppressor. Okay, basically uh, uh, f following his formula to destruction. Okay, following his system. The word system means pit. Okay, and that's exactly what it is for you Israelites. Okay, he's the damn devil the Bible speaks of. Okay, and he knows that we are the children of the Most High. So his whole makeup and, and vibration is to get you destroyed, man. The accuser of the brethren, man, the, uh, the devil, Diablos, you know, I mean, a false accuser. And that's what he does all the day long. Hey, how about Shem Shah? Look at your kids. Look at your children. Look how wicked they are. They eat pork all day, every day, man. OK, they, they, they're the biggest smokers. That ain't the custom of Israel smoking, you know. And it goes back to what I brought out in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. We, we are holy people unto the Heavenly Father. There's certain things that we shouldn't be doing, man. Okay? But we know through prophecy, hey, uh, our people are not going to hear, hear, hear the word of the Lord. Okay? And they're going to be destroyed. 
But for those of us that do hear the word of the Lord, there's a certain way we got to move, man. It, ju it just is what it is. And when you really fashion yourself in that, in that manner, and really it's the Heavenly Father fashioning you, okay? When you walking in that manner, you, you feel better, man. You know, you have a, a, a bigger purpose. You feel like you're somebody, man. Okay? You know? So, you know, it, it, it starts in the mind, though. Okay, but I read 11 again. It says, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And how is this going to be uh, uh, brought upon the world? Okay, with the food famines, food shortages, war, uh, pestilence. Okay, hey, this uh, devil kill gates just said, you know, uh, um, you know, the, the this. Uh, this pandemic is uh, pretty much fizzling out, but hey, uh, there's another one coming, okay? And, and and with this one, man, you know, just seeing the, the makeups of it and, and just uh, analyzing through the spirit, hey, people ain't going to want to leave out their house, man. This ain't going to be uh, uh, like this one was with all type of loopholes in it and people uh, uh, exposing that it is, it, you know, it's a fake ploy. You know, now people, you know, so to speak, have have died from it, but just like they've died from everything else, car accidents, AIDS, cancer, so on and so forth. But this next one, and the reason we know that, okay, we're not just going off of what this devil says. The reason we know that is because the scriptures prophesy of, of, of pestilences, okay, and plagues, like they say, of biblical proportion, you see? And that's how all of those things are going to come on the earth. Verse 12, it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. You see, and what is that speaking about? That's speaking about the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, because while all of these things are going to be transpiring, like the Lord said that the love of many shall wax cold, iniquity shall abound. When you read 2 Ezra 15, 16. You know, uh, uh, you know, Isaiah 13 in this same chapter where it talks about being uh, like a chase row, you know, it's, it's going to be all out here. Jacob's trouble. OK, but they're going to be a certain eclectic group of men. OK, that are going to have their scruples about themselves and, and, and it's going to be obvious. OK, like you read Isaiah 4 and 1, you know. You know, seven women shall take hold of one man, you know, so that he can take away their reproach. It's going to be all out here, all out here, and there's only going to be a certain amount of men that are going to have their scruples and they're going to be able to maintain within them times. And it's not going to be of themselves. It's going to be because, uh, like it says, uh, what's that, Revelations, the third chapter, the 10th verse, because you have kept the patience of my word, I will keep also keep you from the hour of temptation. So there's going to be a spirit on certain men that people are going to see that, hey, that is a man of God. It's going to be, it's going to be obvious, like it says in Psalms 110. OK, that people shall be willing in the dead our power. So that's exactly what this is speaking about. Isaiah 13 and 12 again. I will make a man more precious than gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. OK, and that's the reason I had this pure gold, this fine gold, you know. That fine gold this bar fine gold. And that's what the Lord is, is, is molding us into. OK, there's a process. To get fine gold, you just don't find that. No, you have to purify it. You have to break it down. You have to reform it. You have to try it in the fire, okay? And that's exactly what the Lord is doing with us, man, okay? And we just got to trust the process, you know, because it ain't us doing it, you know? And these things are coming. We're seeing it. We're seeing it happening on the earth, okay? And that's why, you know, hence the title of this lesson, Know Your Worth, okay? Let's get one more... Um, no, you're worth brothers, okay? A certain le uh, level of integrity we got to walk with, and it's not out of pride. It's just because of who we are, okay? Who the Lord created us to be. This is the book of Revelation chapter 7. Revelation 72, it says, and I saw another angel ascending 
from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice uh, to the four angels to whom it were given to hurt the earth and the sea. OK, and uh, those four angels, uh, you know, are, are vehemently waiting. OK, for the Lord to let them loose. OK, and uh, hey, this is uh, something that they've been waiting to do for a while. They've, the Lord has given them the download to do this. OK, and hey, it pleases them to do the will and the bidding of the heavenly father. OK, so when it's the Lord lets them loose, it, it's going to be flat out destruction. OK, high, holy hell. Let's see. Verse three, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. OK, so for that alone, you know, that let, that shows you, look, man, the, the most High really, really cares about us, man. OK, and we have to show him that love back, man, you know, and that appreciation because out of all eight, eight billion or eight billion plus people on the planet. OK, and you go down to read, you know, I'm not going to read it. Uh, you know, 12,000 from each one of the tribes, man. OK, and when you look at how many uh, uh, so-called African-Americans there are, how many so-called uh, 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 West Indians there are, so many so-called, how many so-called Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Latinos, OK? And the Lord said, only, I'm only taking 12,000 out of each one of them, man. OK, that is humbling. Hey, and I remember, uh, you know, first coming into this faith. You know, me and the brother, beloved brother, Ramak Yum Young, we were uh, having a conversation with a, a, a guy who, you know, at the time we were teaching them that he was he was a Cuban, but he was a Manasseh. He was of the tribe of Manasseh. And we read this scripture to him and he basically looked at us and said, I'm fucked. You know, only 12,000. I'm fucked. OK, because what he he perceived the amount of Cubans that that, that are on the planet. And he's like, damn, if only 12,000, I don't have a shot. And we, you know, comfort him and we told him, look, hey, but look how many people uh, 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 understand what you understand and, and, and are being told what you're being told. And, you know, it seemed to comfort him. But, you know, shortly after that guy went into the world and uh, became a demon, tats all in his face and shit, you know. But the, but the moral that, 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 uh, that account was, you know, he, he saw that 12,000, that's a small number. Compared to the amount of Cubans or Manasseh, Manasseh Knights there are. You see? And that's what we should use as fuel and motivation to constantly uh, uh, know our worth, man. Okay? Uh, let's jump to uh, Revelation 14. This is Revelation chapter 14. I started at the top, at the top, but the point is that uh, uh, I guess three and four. It says Revelation chapter fourteen verse one, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Okay, and that's a cut to those who don't. Uh, who teach their congregations that we don't know the name of the Heavenly Father, okay? Because those men that have the name sealed in their foreheads, okay, uh, are, are right now as we speak and have been proclaiming that name. The scriptures say, uh, the Lord's prayer says, hallowed be thy name, okay? It means to be uh, lifted and exalted. How is he going to give us the Lord's prayer? And Yahweh expounded on that. How is he going to give us... Um, you know, tell us to uh, the, the name should be hollowed if we don't know it. You know, guys are simple. You know, most of them are sellouts. It says, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him in hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of great thunders, uh, great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers 
harping with their harps. Verse three. And they sung as if it were a new song before the throne and before for uh, the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. OK, and guess what? <clears throat> Those men. OK, Lord willing, we're a part of that are, are singing that, that uh, a, a song, a new song in the earth right now as we speak. OK. And only on, the Lord has given that uh, understanding to those men. And that's why, you know, put frankly, a lot of guys just can't get it. Why? Because it wasn't given to him, man. OK. The scriptures are simple. Elder Apostle Gabar was watching the lesson. He was going into that. Hey, the less hey, the scriptures are simple, man. Uh, but to those who seek knowledge. Now, for those who, like I mentioned earlier, who just woke up that they're Israelite and you know, uh, got their feet kicked up and wearing crowns and, you know, uh, 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 being, uh, ha having elder celebrations and <laughs> exalting themselves. They ain't got the juice, man. Okay. And that's another reason to be extremely thankful and understand your worth. The Lord saw fit to give you this understanding. You see, verse four, it says, and it's the point, it says, these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins. These are they and they, and that doesn't mean not to have sex. Okay. That means undefiled with these philosophies, these doctrines. Okay. With Christianity and uh, uh, Buddhism and all that other bullshit, man. Okay. It says, these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto the most high and to the lamb. You see? So like I say, brother, we got to know our worth, man. And like I say, it's in all humility. You know, we're not going to, hey, because we know this is not of ourselves. But hey, seeing that we're in this, in, in this ministry, you know, like the scriptures tell us that those he called, he also chose. And that's how we got to look at it, man. Okay? Scriptures say, let no man take thy crown. That has to be the focus, man. OK, not being high minded and proud, but being confident, you know, that uh, like the Apostle Paul told uh, uh, the brothers at Philippi, man, being confident of this very thing that he that began that work in you will continue it until the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. OK, that is the focus. Verse five. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the most high. OK, and the scripture that pops in my mind is. Hey, um, you know, blessed is the man whose sins are not imputed unto him, man. Okay? Because, hey, guess what? We continue to go off, man, but not willfully, you know? And it's just a part of the process. It's a part of the walk. But, hey, hey Adewan Ratazah, man, we're, we're the guys that, the, you know, our sins are not being, you know, like it says, it says, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. You see? No, regardless of what we do, you know, of course, we don't use that as an occasion to sin and do what the hell we want to do, you know. But there are certain men out here that the Most High is not imputing their sin unto, unto them, okay. And if you say you have not sinned, you are a liar, okay. The only man that has done that is our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and that's the reason we have a fighting chance, man, okay. So understanding our worth, brothers, and, you know, moving forward as this thing matriculates, because it's going to get rough. It's going to get tough, man. We're going through that straight gate, you know, which means a level of difficulty, you know. But I believe I hit the point, and Lord willing, that was edifying. With that, I say shalom.